Hello Laval friends, here's what's new in Laval 11.30 and it's quite unique. Let's go! First, I want to mention that we have now more backed enum support in the framework like almost every week. Now you can also pass an enum to the authorized method of the authorizes request trade. Thank you, Johan. Then we have new testing helpers that you might need when working with the new defer feature in Laravel. Inside this test, I want to make sure that I can publish a podcast. So this means we have a new podcast, which we create here, which is a draft. So this is the status of the podcast. Then we're going to run my publish podcast action, which is going to set it to be published. And then we're just refreshing our instance here and make sure that it is published. But if I run this now, this is going to fail because we expect it to be published, but actually it's draft. So um, what's happening here? Let's take a look inside this handle method of my action. I am updating the podcast, but I'm doing this inside the new defer helper. So if you don't notice yet, the defer helper lets me set a specific callable. And this is going to be run after the request has been sent back to your user. So it's going to be run just a little bit later so that the user don't have to wait. So this is especially handy for tasks that take a little bit longer and you don't want to push on a queue. So in our case now and in our test here, this is yeah, not so useful because our test is failing because my test thinks this is not working because at this point here, the action of my published podcast action has not been run. So how can we fix this? Of course, I could just... Let me just show you this real quick. If I put this outside here and let's run the test again. Now the test is passing, but of course this is not what we want. We want to use the defer method. So let's bring this back in here. So there's a new helper that we can now use, which is called this without defer, which just uh, makes sure that we're going to run our wrapped callables in the defer method immediately. And we're not going to wait until they are until a request has been sent back. So let's run this again. And now you can see this is working. So yeah, whenever you're working with defer inside your application, and when you test it and you run into this issue, this is probably because of this. So make use of this new helper to avoid it. Thank you, Tim. And last, it has become way easier to work with custom IDs for your models. Let me show you. I have here an empty podcast table and let's bring some podcasts in here with a cedar that I have already prepared. Let's run this, let's refresh here and you can see I have 10 new podcasts here with a default ID like we used to. But as you probably know in Laba, we can also use instead of default IDs, which just have this auto incrementing number, we also have U IDs and we have UL IDs. So what do they look like? First, let's Get back to my migration here and I'm changing this to UID and the name I keep with ID. So that's the one thing. And the second thing I need to change is on my podcast model, which I have here. I'm just adding here new trade has UUIDs. All right, this should be it. Let me um, migrate my database again and let's run our seeder again. And then let me get back to my podcast table. And as you can see, now we have instead of the default integers, we have UIDs here, which obviously is good because of security reasons. And there are some other reasons why they are useful as well. And next to UIDs, we also have ULIDs, which you can also use, which are a bit shorter and a little bit more performant to use. But sometimes you don't need just normal IDs, you don't need UIDs, you maybe have your own special syntax for IDs that you want to use. Now there's something new in level that we can do in order to make this simpler to take use of that. So first what I'm going to do is I'm change this here to a string column and just make sure this is primary as well. And then back inside our podcast model, we have a new trait which is called has unique string IDs. And I can see PHP Storm is already complaining because I need a new method, which is called is valid unique ID. So of course you should need to um, make sure this is valid according to the format that you want to use. Um, currently I'm just using returning true here. And then we have another method, which is called new unique ID. 
And here I'm going to define what my new unique ID looks like. So what I want to use is I want to go with a string here at the beginning, which is pod for podcast. And then I just want to add uh, maybe a unique UID. So let's do a string helper and let's add a UUID at the end. All right, let's check again. So we have this new trait here. We are having these two new methods that we need to implement to define our new unique ID and if this is valid or not. And then let's just refresh again. Refresh the database. Refresh the data. And now refreshing our database podcast. And you can see now we have this new unique IDs with our pod string here at the beginning. And yeah, there are different ways because there are more unique IDs that you can use than UID and ULID. So maybe there's something else that you want to use. And now in level, this is way more easier by using those two new methods is valid, create the new ID and with using this new trait. Thank you, Luke. That's it for this week. Please like and subscribe for more videos and see you the next time. Bye.